section 2.5, uh, theorems of polynomial functions, we wrote down the polynomials, uh, I'm sorry, the zeros of the polynomial in the example. Now we're going to write the definition of it. And so we have polynomial with integer coefficients and the ratio of p over q, and we'll get to what is p and what is q in a minute. Um, <clears throat> is a rational zero then p is a factor of the constant term Remember, your constant term is this one, the last one, the number, no variable. And the other one, Q, is going to be a factor of the leading coefficient. Which one is the leading coefficient for that polynomial? A to what subscript? Sub n, right? This one. So it will be. Um, and so this theorem is only going to give you possibilities, all right? And so we're going to take all the ratios of the factors of constant term. And we're going to divide them by the factors of the leading coefficient. <clears throat> so we're going to get to example one and apply that theorem. So first of all, we need to look at the constant term. So remember this, the possible these are just possibilities. Possible rational zeros. So we need the factors of four, and we're going to divide them by the factors. What is the leading coefficient in this case? Negative one. Very good. So let's see, the factors of 4, we don't know, they could be divided by 1, by 2, and by 4, correct? But we could also divide it by negative 1, negative 2, and negative 4. Then what are the factors of negative 1? Only positive 1 and negative 1. So what we could do to just save some space, or time, we could just write them in this way. Plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, divided by plus minus 1. Now this one is easy because all the possibilities are going to be all the combinations. Um, so it will be Plus minus 1 divided by 1, so it's just plus minus 1. Plus minus 2 divided by 1 is just plus minus 2. And plus minus 4 divided by 1 is just plus minus 4. And that's it. So how many possibilities do we have? Six. Six possibilities because you have to counter the positives and the negatives. So let's move on. And this question is only saying list all possible rational zeros. So we just need to list them, and that's it. That's the end. Okay? Now, my math lab, you might have to enter them individually, like the positive and then the negative, positive, negative. All right? So 
Let's move on to the next one. So again, this is a possible rational zero. So we're going to take the factors of negative 2, and we're going to divide them by the factors of the leading coefficient here, which is 15. Now this one is going to be a little more complicated, but it's not impossible. So factors of negative 2 will be plus minus 1, and what else? Plus minus 2. two. That's it. Now the factors of 15, we start with plus minus 1, plus minus 3, and plus minus 5. Now for all the possibilities... <coughs> yes, thank you, so that's very true. Plus minus 15. So now to list all the possibilities, which is all we're doing first. Possible rational zeros. They will be um, both numbers divided by 1. So plus minus 1, plus minus 2. Then we take, again, both numbers, but now divided by 3. Yeah. So plus minus 1 third, plus minus 2 thirds. And then we take the same numbers here, so now we divide them by 5. So plus minus 1 fifth, and plus minus 2 fifths. And the last denominator we have here will be 15, right? So we'll have the same numbers from the numerator, plus minus 1 over 15, and then plus minus 2 over 15. So how many possibilities do we have? 16. 16. 16. Oh, yeah. Okay, so 16, right? 16 possibilities. <coughs> But how many zeros should we have according to the degree of the polynomial? What is the degree? Three. So you should have zero. I mean, three zeros. At most, three zeros. We cannot have 16. So how are we going to narrow it down? Okay. So if we have something like this, I would tell you to use your graphing calculator to make an educated guess. And how can we, well, let's just get to this one. So now the next question says find the zeros, not just list them, but we actually have to find them. So we're going to use the same rational zero theorem. So we have the factors of negative 6. And we're going to divide them by the factors of the leading coefficient. What's the leading coefficient? One. One. So I'll be PC, right? So then we'll have factors of negative 6 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and plus minus 6. All of those divided by plus minus 1. So that tells me my possible rational zeros will be... Um, the integers, right? We don't have to worry about any of the any um, fraction because we're just dividing by one. Yes? Are we clear with that? All right. Now we have how many possibilities there? Eight. Yes. And how many zeros can we have at most? At most three. Degree is three. So we could have at most three zeros. Okay, so um, let's do this. How many groups do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, perfect. Okay, so starting with Amber's table, you guys will test positive one, negative one. How would you test? Okay. Substitute or easier than that, synthetic division. Okay? So positive <coughs> 1, negative 1. Positive <coughs> 2, negative 2. Positive 3, negative 3. Positive 4, negative 4. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Positive six, negative six. So what you do, you you write your coefficients, and then whatever number I assign to you goes inside the box. You guys are negative six, David. If it was a factor, yes. Like if I tell you x minus two is the divisor, um, that would be like that equals zero. So if we solve for x, it would be x equals positive. So if we want to know if this one is a zero. That will go inside the box. So we have found two of the zeros. Where's the third one? Okay, very good. So the three zeros are um, x equals 2, x equals negative 3, and the third one was x equals negative 1, right? And you know how you guys test it by using the original coefficients, right? So I'm going to show you another way that you could use to save yourself some time. So the coefficients of the polynomial were 1, 2, negative 5, and negative 6, correct? So we already established that our zeros are negative 1, well, let's put them in order, negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, divide them, just like you guys did. So I start here with a negative 3, right? And of course, I'm going to get this. We already know this. So 1, negative 3, negative 1, positive 3. Am I saying this right? Negative 2, and then positive 6, and then 0, right? Okay, so we already knew that was going to happen. But now what I can do is divide by this one with a new coefficient. I don't have to go back to the originals. Once you have found a zero, then you can move on and select the next number, so negative one. And so that would be one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one plus negative one is negative two. Negative one times negative two is positive two. And negative two plus two is zero. And then we could do the same with the other one, with 2. So 1, 2 times 1 is 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So now let's see what well, we're actually factoring while we're doing this. So we started with a polynomial of degree 3, right? And then here we have degree 2. And then here we have degree 1. <clears throat> and what do we have here? Just a number. Yeah, just a 1. So if we were to list the factors for that polynomial, um, it will be, at this point, it was x plus 3. And then we have this one, x squared minus x minus 2. Then once we got here, we found another factor. So we went to x plus 3. And then with this 0, there will be x plus 1. And then we got this factor here, which is x minus 2. Right? Yeah. And those were our zeros. So that's a nice trick to use with synthetic division. Once you have found one, you can reduce your work by using new coefficients. All right, so um, we have found the three rational zeros, correct? Right? So let's move on. Uh, same thing, find the zero. So I'm going to leave that to you guys. 
So negative three, we're going to test to make sure. Negative three times one is negative three. Seven minus three is four. Negative three times four is negative twelve. Eleven plus negative twelve is negative one. Negative three times negative one is positive three. Negative three plus three is zero. So that's correct. So we started with something of degree what? Three, right? Okay. So it makes sense that this will be degree two. And then this will be degree one, and then we have our constant term. So, have, have you guys been able to find another one? Oh, no. no, it's just negative three. Okay, so the reason is because we only have one, out of those four possibilities, we only have one rational zero. But do you remember our first polynomial? It had like everything, right? It had all kinds of zeros. It had um, real, these two were also rational. Let's add that to your page, please. Real and rational, the first two. And then the next two were real, but irrational. And then here we have imaginary. So that means that we could have a combination of, right? So the rational zero theorem is only going to find one of them, and that was x equals negative 3. That's fine. Now, because of that, our factors so far will be x plus 3, right, times the polynomial that we got from here, x squared plus 4x minus 1. Now, is there a way that we could factor this polynomial? Mm, yes. Actually, no. Because the only factors of negative 1 will be plus, plus, uh, plus and negative 1. And there's no way you could get the term in the middle, which is 4x. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So x is equal to negative b plus minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So our coefficients are coming from here. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to negative 1. So we're going to substitute those in here, right, for b, b, a, c, and a. And don't forget that there's a negative here, okay? So after substituting, it's going to say, Negative 4 plus minus the root plus here. 4 square minus 4 times A times C. Be careful with your signs. It doesn't hurt to check them uh, just one more time to make sure. Because on your next exam, you don't want to make those same mistakes, right? You have to be careful. Yeah. All right, so X is going to be negative 4 plus minus the square root of uh, 16 plus? Minus four. Plus four. Plus, right? Because negative, negative. And then divided by? Two. Two. So from here, I'm going to keep simplifying. Negative four plus minus the square root of 20. Everything divided by two. Now we're going to, if I ask you for the exact answer or my math lab, you know you have to factor the 20, which will be four times five. Which is going to be like four. So now let's take the square root of um, 4, which Arturo said it was 2. And then what happens with the 5? Okay. Now, the fact that we're dividing by 2, don't forget, we split the fraction. So the real part gets 
I'm sorry, the rational part is divided by 2, and so does the irrational part, the one with the root of 5. So once we have that, we can still simplify because, um, well, obviously the, this one will reduce to negative 2, and the other one will reduce to square root 1, square root of 5, right? So we can write the square root of 5. But you, can, you have to keep in mind that here we're not finding 1, we're finding how many? 2. two. One of them is negative 2 plus the square root of 5, and the other one will be x is equal to negative 2 minus the square root of 5. Right? And how many can we have at most? Three. We already found them, right? So our zeros were, let me list them here. The first one was negative 3, right? Okay. And the other two will be x is equal to negative 2 plus the square root of 5. And the last one will be x is equal to negative 2 minus the square root of 5. And from the beginning, I told you that if you had rational zeros, they will be conjugate. Meaning you have the same numbers, but you have the sign in the middle is the opposite. Okay. Um, what if I ask you write down the factors? So the factors will be x plus 3 times x plus 2 minus the square root of 5 and x plus 2 plus the square root of 5. Like if I was bringing everything back to the same side as the x. That's how you go from zeros to factors. All right, next problem. Well, I'm sorry, do you guys get a chance to copy everything? No. Okay, so you guys need to write faster. The video is going to, I'm going to just upload it so you might get to the The ones that have them are not that great. Okay. okay. You good, Serene? Almost? Is Kendra blocking your view? <laughs> okay. Yeah? yeah? Okay, so now we're going to solve this polynomial here. So we're going to have to use all of our tools here. Uh, rational zero theorem first. So factors of 24. Oh my god, that has to so many. One, two, three. Four, six, twelve. And eight. Oh, I skipped eight. Plus minus eight. And then what? Plus minus twenty-four. Okay. So um we could do that, right? Decimal, how long would it take us? <laughs> so this is when you use your calculator wisely, okay? You graph it, and then you make your educated guess. Let's do it. So if you don't have a calculator, go get one from the calculator, please. So what is the educated guess? Based on where the graph is crossing the x-axis, right? All right. So wouldn't it be a 2? Positive? Positive. Okay, let's see if it's true. So we have a 2. And I'm going to check with synthetic division, right? Because I want to see if the remainder is a 0. But I see a little problem here. Let's see. X cubed. We don't have one, so we have to put a 0. You must. And then we have negative 6 for x squared, negative 8, positive 24. So let's try this. 1, 2, 2. 4, negative 2, negative 4, negative what, 12, and negative 24. Great. Got it. So then this is x cubed, this is x squared, this is x, and this is just a number, right? So did you guys find another one that you could see clearly? No. That is crossing the x intercept? Really? Mm. Okay. I don't like this. Oh, I see. What's doing that? Um, 
on the graph, is it crossing the x-axis? It's touching, right? It's touching and it's turning around, right? Multiplicity, exactly. So that means that we have it. We could have had it twice, so let's try. <laughs> and we don't need to go back to the original coefficients, we can just keep going. So we drop the first number, 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 plus times 4 is 8. Negative 2 plus 8 is six. Positive 6. Positive 6. Positive 6. And then 2 times positive 6 is positive 12. And then we'll have a 2? 0. All right, great. Then. So we went from x cubed, now this will be x squared plus x plus the number. Now, could we factor that one? Two and three? No, we cannot. So we're going to have to use quadratic, yes. So a is the coefficient here, one. b is the coefficient of x, which is positive four. And c is the number six. So x will be negative b plus minus the square root of <coughs> x squared minus 4ac over 2a. So minus 4 plus minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6. So negative 4, oh I'm sorry, divided by 2 times 1, right? So negative 4 plus minus the square root of 16 minus, what is 4 times 6? 24, okay. Over 2. Um, and then here, are you guys starting to worry a little? Negative 4 <coughs> plus minus, what's going to happen? 16 minus 24. Negative, negative inside. So what is that going to be? Negative So. We know at this point that we're not going to get a real solution, right? right. But that's okay. We're going to get imaginary solution, and that's fine. The only problem is that we don't see them as x-intercepts, but they're still zeros. Even though they're imaginary, they still exist in your imagination. All right? So we factor the negative 8, so it will be negative 1 times 4 times 2 everything divided by 2. So then when we solve this, it's going to result into a... Okay, so the square root of 4 right here is 2. The square root of negative 1 is 5. And then the 2 stays inside the square root. So then all of that divided by 2. Now we can split the fraction. Right? But we're going to divide here, so that would be negative 2 plus minus, and the only numbers we divide are here, not the one inside the square root, please. And so that will be 1, so we could say 1i square root of 2. How many zeros do we have from here? 2. We have x is equal to negative 2 plus i square root of 2. Okay, and the other one, and the other one will be 2, oops, I'm sorry, negative 2 minus i square root of 2. What can you guys tell me about those two zeros? How do we call them? They are imaginary and together they form this beautiful couple, mm -hmm. complex conjugate. Mm -hmm. The complex part comes from the fact that they have the imaginary. Wait, no. Is it because they're added? Conjugates. <laughs> now it should be an S. Okay. We're almost done out of time, so let's uh, move on. Okay, so properties of roots of polynomials. Uh, if we have a... Um, a polynomial of degree n, counting multiple roots, the equation has n roots at most, right? At most uh, different roots. Some of them could repeat, like we saw, we saw that case earlier. 
Now, anytime you have an imaginary root solution or zero, you're going to have the complex conjugate. Uh, they always come in conjugate pairs, always. Okay, now the fundamental theorem of algebra. If we have a polynomial of degree n, and of course the degree is higher than zero, so equal to one or bigger, and it has to be an integer. Remember, degrees of polynomials are integers. So the equation f of x equals zero has at least one complex root. So what it means is that you're always going to have a zero, at least one. It could be imaginary. Um, well, if it was imaginary, you will have to. You will have the conjugates. Conjugates, that's true. But uh, if you had a real one, let's say that you have something of degree five. Maybe you could have um, one complex root, right? It will just go across. Or maybe, and when I say complex, remember that complex is real and imaginary, right? Oh, it's an x y. Yes. So it could have one complex root. Could it have two? Wouldn't it have conjugates? If it had two, it could be like, yeah, it could have two conjugates. That's true. As long as it has one. Yeah. Or it could have three, right? Because maybe two are repeating. Or it could have four. Or it could have five. That's the most it could have. But at least it will have one. All right? It could just be repeating five times. Okay. So now we have done... Um, we have been finding the zeros from a polynomial. And so what we're going to do now is go from factors, no, actually from zeros to factors, which is pretty simple. So right here we have the zeros listed for the polynomial. So what is... And it says here that 2 is a repeated root with multiplicity of 2. So this means that our zeros are x equals 2, but they're telling us twice, right? Twice. Right, this one. The next one will be the imaginary one, which will be negative 2 plus i square root of 2, and the other one is? Minus I squared of two. This is the same one that we did the previous one. So then if I want to list all the factors, they will be x minus 2, x minus 2, x plus 2 minus i square root of 2, and then again, x plus 2 plus i square root of 2. Those will be the factors. And so that takes us here to the linear factorization theorem. Hey, John, do you have this? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, hold on. So we have here the factors. And so what the linear factorization theorem says is that you can list them all like that. And then you will still have the leading coefficient out here. So that's what you guys are going to learn to do um, next. And so, since this time, I'm going to stop the video now, and then I'm going to finish the video. I'm going to upload it to Emoto, and you guys are going to watch it on your own. And then you're still responsible for homeworks 2.3, 2.4, and 2.5 for Wednesday. Okay, what's your question? Okay.